So ladies and gentlemen, enough of theoretical videos on massive wealth. Let's dive deep into a horoscope and see how nakshatras can actually make you wealthy. And of course, nakshatras just don't make you wealthy because planets will ultimately decide. And planets sit in particular nakshatras. So in that sense, nakshatras are very powerful. All right. So today we will see the horoscope of a multimillionaire. I will not reveal the inner details because of confidential reasons. But I've used this chart in many other places. And I will do this again here. And I will explain stepwise how you can do it for yourself or for your clients also. All right. And uh, as I announced yesterday and before, I will be in New Delhi from 25th November to 2nd of December. So if you want to have a personalized one-to-one -one consultation with me, then please send me an email at exoticastrology at the rate gmail.com. My team will respond to you at the earliest. Uh, slots are getting filled very fast. And please book one at the earliest. All right. Now, if you permit me, I will share the screen and don't forget to hit the thumbs up uh, and sorry, the subscribe button and the thumbs up. All right. And if you want a personalized online consultation, you can always go to my website down in the description section. So I will share my screen. Where is the screen share? Yes, it's here. All right. I hope you can see it. So this is uh, an example chart of a male. So let's dive deep into it straight. So first you always check the date of birth. So if you check the date of birth, you need to see certain numbers like 1, 7, 9, 5. These are very powerful numbers. Okay, I have spoken about them quite a bit in detail. Maybe not too much, but I'll speak more. So 1 shows leadership, administration. Number 9 shows uh, courage. It's a Mar Mars number. Number 1 is the sun's number. Uh, then number 5 is classic Mercury and number 7 shows luck. Okay, so these four numbers are the numbers of wealth primarily. And the number six also is good. It shows luxury, but not wealth specifically. But in general, it is also good for profession. Now, you see what's there in this person's date of birth. So you see, um, first of all, you check the basic number. Okay, basic number is the sum of the day. So now this person is born on a single day. So single day in the sense, you know, like five, it's not like... Uh, 10 or 11 or 23 or 30, 31, whatever. It is one single number, okay? So that means 5 is the basic number. And then there is 9. And then there is 6 and 7. So we do not take the first two digits of the year for calculation, you know, for calculation of the numbers. So this person has the number 9, uh, number 5 and 6 and 7. But there is another number that we take apart from the basic number, which is the destiny number. Destiny number is everything that is there, the complete DOB, you add it up. So 5 plus 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 6 plus 7. When you calculate the destiny number, always take the first two digits of the year also. So the entire date of birth, don't exclude 1 and 9. Okay. So if you add all this, 5 plus 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 6 plus 7, you can add it and it comes to the number 1. So as I said, all the four numbers, 1, 9, 7, 5, all the four numbers are present. Okay, along with 6 also. So that's another blessing. But that's not it because numerology tells you about the day and on that day so many people will be born, right? So it can't be that you everybody are born on that day will be a multimillionaire. It cannot be. So then we go to astrology. Okay, uh, then we see the horoscope. That's very important. Now, you need to understand something. All these placements that I'm telling you about planetary, you know, placements, lordships, all this, they have to be seen in the Bhavachalit chart. So in the Bhavachalit chart, let me uh, go and show. So here you, if you see, uh, you can just see, you know, many planets in Leo, then uh, Cancer, Libra, Scorpio, and Pisces. So this is roughly the Lagna chart, which shows the sign placements. Okay. So for example, Jupiter is in Cancer. Okay. May or may not be in the first house, but it is in Cancer. So, as I have said in my Bhav Chalit chart video, you can go here in this report in AstroSage. So, here uh, in the KP system, uh, you can find this. So, this is very similar. Okay, so planets are majorly, majorly in the same houses as it appears in the Lagna chart. 
although to understand more you can go to my bhava chale chart video and you can watch okay so for simplicity for explanation uh, for the sake of explanation because both are almost like you know very similar so i will ignore this and i will go to the lagna chart directly so that you are not confused okay so as of now let's assume uh, all the planets are here almost they actually are also okay except a few now what we need to do is we need to check the majority nakshatras in a chart if majority of the nakshatras are related to the artha houses the second sixth tenth and also the eleventh house because it's the house of gains then uh, you will be a multimillionaire okay majority now what does it mean majority majority means uh, more than four or five okay at least five or six has to be there if it is three or four you may be a millionaire or you know like your net worth may be like yeah two three four five million maybe if it is more than five or six or seven you can be multi-millionaire and you can also be a billionaire okay and the more the better but what does it actually mean that's exactly what we are going to see today so for example here if you see let's do stepwise okay so Either the planets or nakshatras have to be associated with the 2nd, 6th, 10th or 11th. It's very simple. And among these four, the 10th and the 11th are the most powerful. Okay. So, first of all, what's going on? If you see, we see the planet Sun. Okay, so what about the planet Sun? So, Sun is very Sun place. Sun is in the second house, right? So, Sun at a planetary level is fulfilling this condition. But, nakshatra... So, where is sun placed? In Purva Falguni. Purva Falguni is lauded by Venus, right? So, where is Venus placed? In the second house. Condition satisfied using Nakshatra. Then, what about moon? Moon is in the second house in Leo. So, planet-wise condition satisfied. Then, where is moon placed? In Purva Falguni. Again, lauded by Venus in the second house. Condition satisfied. Now, here moon is also the Lagna Lord because this is Cancer Ascendant. So, therefore, Lagna Lord, Sun, Moon, all the three. So, here we have two Sun and Moon. They are satisfying this condition. So, this means this is huge. The chances of being a millionaire is exponentially higher. Okay. Just, just these three planets alone. Lagna Lord, Sun, Moon. Then, we go, but remember the rule, not just two, three. We need at least five or six planets, at the least, okay? Then we go to uh, Mars. Where is Mars placed? Mars is in the fifth house. So, Mars kind of does not uh, fulfill this uh, condition. But fifth house in general is a good house. So, it's not a great house for money, but it's positive in general, okay? So, it's like neutral, but positive, but it's not great. But now, uh, you see what's going on here. Mars is in the sign, uh, sign of Scorpio, but is in Vishakha Nakshatra, okay? Now, Vishakha Nakshatra is lauded by Jupiter. Now, what is Jupiter doing in the chart? He is the sixth lord, right? So, there you go. So, either the second, sixth, tenth or eleventh has to come somehow, okay? So, Mars is satisfying this at a Nakshatra level. So, thumbs up. Then we go to Mercury. What's Mercury doing in the chart? Mercury tick mark. He is in the second house. So, satisfied. But Nakshatra wise, Uttara Falguni. Uttara Falguni is lauded by the sun. So, Surya is again in the second house. So, double tick. Mercury wins. <laughs> Guru. Guru Maharaj is in Cancer. Guru is by default six lord. So, condition is satisfied. Alright. And... Very well placed in Mulzikon as per degrees. Uh, not exalted as per degrees, but in Mulzikon fantastic position. But what about uh, Nakshatra? Guru is in Ashlesha. So, Ashlesha is lauded by Mercury, right? So, where is Mercury? Again, second house. So, how many planets we got? Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter. All the five through Nakshatra and also except Mars oh, via planetary placement is indicating these houses. So, tick mark, thumbs up. Uh, but let's see if there's more, right? <laughs> so what about Venus? Venus by default, 11th Lord, nothing else to be seen. All right, but now let's see where Venus uh, is in Leo, in Maghanakshatra, lauded by K2. 
Now, is K2 indicating uh, these four houses? Uh, yes or no? Well, actually it is because K2 gives results of the dispositor also. So, K2's dispositor is Venus because K2 is in Libra and Libra is lauded by Venus which is the 4th Lord and 11th Lord. Okay, so K2 is satisfying. That means the uh, planet Venus because he is in Ketu's nakshatra and Ketu is also indicating the 11th house. So, Venus is satisfying 11th house, 11th lord. Okay. So, double tick planetary placement by and also he is placed itself in the second house. So, Venus is like, you know, triple tick. Okay. <laughs> then, last, uh, who can forget the malefics? Shani Maharaj, where is Saturn? Saturn is in the sign of Pisces. Ninth house, again, like Mars, average, not the best, but neutral positive you can say it, okay but saturn is in revati revati is lauded by mercury where is mercury second house so see every planet is just ticking right it's just tick mark full marks to every planet <laughs> rahu maharaj where is rahu maharaj do i need to say 10th house name fame power position authority fantastic ashwini nakshatra lauded by k2 Again, Ketu is indicating the twelfth, uh, the eleventh house because Venus is the dispositor of Ketu and also the eleventh Lord. So, thumbs up, Shani Maharaj, Rahu, Rahu Maharaj also uh, sitting in Ashwini. Then Ketu Maharaj by default indicates the eleventh house. So Ketu is tick mark. What about Swati Nakshatra, where Ketu is placed? Swati is lauded by Rahu, right? So you see, oh, all the nine planets are indicating tick, 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 tick. Now imagine if Mars, Saturn uh, were all also indicating at a planetary level, maybe this person would be a billionaire. As of now, this person is a multi-billionaire, okay? And now please understand, this is just a preliminary analysis because you also have to see the Navamsha, you have to see, you know, Ashtagvarga, you have to see Dashas, okay? But for complexity, it will be like a two-hour session. So I'm, I'm limiting my analysis to this only, okay? But don't uh, just watch the beginning part and start commenting, you know, where is D9, D10 and all this is there, okay? Because see, why I'm saying that this is also, that is also there because this chart will be there for two hours, right? Around two hours. So everybody born in that time will also have this, but they will not become multimillionaires, okay? But now if you see, uh, if you see the uh, Navamsha chart, so in the Navamsha you see, you can see Surya. Surya is an Avamsha Lagna. Okay. So Leo Lagna. So lauded by the sun again sitting in the second house. Okay. Again, the Mars and uh, so, sorry, Venus and Rahu again in the 11th house. Okay. Saturn, Mercury, Ketu. I mean, uh, this shows all the talents, you know, trines of the Navamsha shows talents, right? So of course, Jupiter and Mars are placed in the Dustala. So there were some struggles in this person's life, which is but natural. Okay, and you can go in the divisional charts and you can see, okay. So, uh, you can also see the Ashtag Varga and I will not go much into details. But most important, after doing this analysis, you check the Dashas. But for this person, it does not matter which Dasha comes. This person will always make money, okay. So, uh, this person's life started in Venus Mahadasha. So, Venus again, tick mark. So, then Sun, tick mark. Then Moon, you know, tick mark, then Mars, Nakshatra wise tick mark, and then Rahu, fantastic, stupendous, okay. So this person made majority of his wealth in Rahu Mahadasha, okay. And as I said, I will not include more details, you know, what profession and all this, because, uh, no. and then you see Jupiter, okay, fantastic, brilliant, you know? and then of course, Saturn Mahadasha is uh, about to come after some time and I'm sure that will also be fantastic, okay? Ninth house, lot of spirituality, Pisces in the house of Mantra, fifth house in the Navamsha, fantastic, brilliant, this is, okay? And you can also see using Yogini Dasha, you know, we will discuss this some other time, maybe, you know, fantastic, all these periods. So, this is what I wanted to show, like how you can see massive wealth using nakshatras in a chart. I hope you like this analysis and if you liked it, then please 
show your appreciation by liking and also by commenting what do you think L let's take a while guess you know what does this person do let me see i will not reveal the answer but let me see or maybe i will <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your patience. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new and for personalized consultations, you can always go to my website or if you want to meet me in New Delhi from 25th November to 2nd of December, please send an email to exoticastrology at the rate gmail.com. Thank you so much. Jai Siaram. Please take care. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.